everybody. So my project today and the project I've been meaning to do forever is painting this old buffet that's been in our family for I don't even know how long. And my sister did the hard part and stripped the split veneer up here and she put in, I think it's called Bondo. I'm not sure exactly what she did, but she's a miracle worker and she filled it in and sanded it down so it's ready to go. I just need to clean it off and prep to chalk paint it all and I'll do some progress updates. Okay, so I finished taking off all of the knobs except for these. I've just realized I forgot to take those off. But I brought down a screwdriver to do that real quick. And, but I took off the clear knobs so that I can paint the drawers. And, um, and I wiped everything out and I wiped off the cobwebs underneath. And um, I found something. <laughs> this used to be my mom's little sewing push pins that she used to use back in the, I don't know, like 80s, I guess. Look at that. I don't know. <laughs> it's just memories. Speaking of memories, this buffet has been, like I said, in my family for a while. And it's the one piece that like, um, it's just kind of stayed with my mom and then I took it from my mom and it's, it's hideous. I mean, it's absolutely hideous and it needs a makeover really bad. And it kind of reminds me of my childhood and, um, um, the idea of like redoing my childhood, kind of like putting the white paint over all of the scars, all of the pain, um, and all of the work that it took, you know, to get it to this point. This is why it's been very motivating for me to do this buffet, um, and why I decided to keep it because it just kind of represents me working on myself and, um, the time that it took and, and also my sister helped me. So it's just like, it's kind of symbolic in that she helped me, um, through tough times as well. So yeah, little sentimental piece right there. a couple hours later and I've got the first coat of paint on this. It already looks so much better, you guys. So amazing. And by the way, this is not a tutorial tutorial at all. This is like, I hope I just get this done type of thing. So this is my first official by myself painting um, uh, with chalk paint. So uh, I painted with my sister before, but it was years ago. So I am hope I'm doing the right thing. I do notice that this paint is rather streaky, um, but it's the, um, right here, Americana Decor Chalky Finish, and it's in the color Lace. And it's in comparison to the Annie's Chalk Paint. So yeah, I noticed it's streaky, but this is the first coat, so I think it'll look better on the second coat. And I already used one, one of those for, um, the whole first coat so second coat probably won't look as bad but here's the back looks pretty nice too and i had to get up in here inside you know like down in here and paint which was kind of a pain but yep looks good though it was worth it um so yeah we'll get the second coat on it Alrighty, a couple hours later and the second coat is finished and it definitely took a lot more um working in with the brush strokes and going over it maybe two or three times in some areas, especially like the cabinet doors and on top, as you can see, it's not perfectly covered or even on top because my sister did her best to try to save this that had tons of water damage. So, um, but that's okay because I'm going to be putting mostly a runner over it anyway, all the time. So yeah, I had to do the doors a lot of it, a lot more and the drawers, um, they definitely needed several, uh, I think three coats maybe. So yeah, um, Annie's chalk paint is good. I don't have, remember having to use, um, as much work and <laughs> it covered a little bit better than the American decor paint, which is what I use. Anyway, now it's time to get the sandpaper going and I'm going to distress edges a little bit to give it a little bit of a, um, you know, like aged look and then the wax. So I am doing the sanding and distressing and giving it a bit of a weight, um, a worn out faded look. And you can see I've done a little bit here. 
and it brings out the details in the wood, which I really like. And you just take a piece of fine sandpaper and you just go over the edges and it just kind of takes a little bit off and it adds, you know, to the character of the piece and helps bring out the detail. And it makes it look a little like freshly painted and more like broken in, which I like. So now to continue with the rest of the piece. Hey everybody, so excuse my appearance. Um, I've had a rough couple days, plus I've been working on this and yeah, I've just, do you ever get to that piece when you're working with some furniture? And I know a lot of people do where it's being stubborn or something happens and you're just like, I can't work on it anymore. I have to take a break. Well, that's kind of going on right now. So I, yeah, <laughs> I'm basically trying to sand off and give the um you know the the piece some natural um i guess flaws and it's in distress an aged look and it looks really good and i'll show you a couple of um pictures of how some of the my favorite parts turned out but um the one of the doors closed in the front and i don't have the knobs on it so <laughs> i'm trying to figure out how I am going to get that open and I've tried prying it open with a flat head screwdriver. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's already kind of damaged the lower corner where I'm trying to get it open. And I was testing to see if the paint would stick and before I knew it, the door closed or I just accidentally closed the door. I don't know how that happened, but it just did. And oh my gosh. So I don't know how to get that open. And then there's just parts of the buffet that I just cannot rub off the paint. Like my fingers are feel so raw and I'm wondering if I should have got maybe a medium sandpaper or something a little bit more coarse because it's just, it's taking a lot of effort. And when I worked on my last piece with my sister, I remember being able to just take some sandpaper off and it came off like really easy and effortlessly. And it's not really happening with this piece, but, um, but then I like, I was listening to some music while I'm doing this and I just kind of had like this weird emotional moment where I just like totally broke down. Like, I don't even know. It's like sometimes when you work on a piece of furniture, it has something to tell you. And, um, it's just like, I spent so much trying to get the perfect white paint on here and it looked great and it's perfect. And then I'm going in and I'm getting these flaws and it reminded me of myself, like, you know, distress. And I'm, it reminded me of myself, like, how stubborn I am with like, I want to look perfect and I want to like, you know, have the perfect white thing and just this inner perfection type thing going on. And, um, and really I'm trying to show the piece, you look great when you have a little bit of your edges rubbed off, you look great, um, worn, you look great looking a little tired and <laughs> you know, like not so tired that, you know, what it looked like before, but and so it's just like, I felt like it was like speaking to me in that way. Like, just like I do that to myself, you know? Um, so I don't know I, I, do you ever work on pieces of furniture or something like that? And you feel like it like tells you something or has something to tell you about yourself anyway. So I'm taking a break. That's what I'm doing now. And, um, yeah. Hi everyone. So I am actually doing the wax part and this is what the wax looks like. It's actually different than I thought it was. It's not stiff. It's more like a conditioner consistency. And um, to show you what I was using, it's the Americana Decor Cream Wax. This stuff is super easy to put on compared to the other wax um, that I remember putting on with Annie's chalk paint. And you just dip it in here and see it just kind of has like a conditioner consistency. And as you can see, like I've used it here and I've worked in small areas. You can see the slight color difference. It's like a little bit more uh, just darkened here and then it's a little bit lighter here. So when you do put on the wax or cream wax conditioner, whatever this stuff is called, <laughs> it will um, intensify the color. And you just want to work in small areas, not like the, again, this is not a tutorial. I had to actually watch a video on how to do this. And um, it just covers nicely. And I can tell that the, the wood is soaking in exactly what it wants. And any excess leftover, I um, grabbed this rag. And um, my sister said to use a white t-shirt just in case. Um, if you use a colored t-shirt, you don't want any color from the t-shirt transferring and mixing with the wax onto your, um, your piece. And so I can just take a little dab of this 
And then later I'll go in into these little crevices and corners and just make sure I get those as well. And it just soaks right in and yeah, that's pretty amazing. All right, the sealant is on and it was surprisingly not that hard to put on, which was great, finally, get a break. Um, and I filed out um, with some sandpaper, this little edge here where I was trying to open it. And I'm so glad I used the chopstick method to open it and I got it open, yay, I'm so happy about that. Um, so yeah, I noticed that once you know I put on the um, cream wax that it did um, turn to the actual color of the paint which is, uh, I would say it's pretty close, don't you think? And um, yeah, so I'm very happy with how it turned out and I'm just gonna wait for it to dry and then you guys clean up and I'll put the nose back on. I'm so excited, like it's nearing finish time. And yeah, I think I just let it air out for a bit too as well. And I am very excited that this is coming together.